Welcome in everybody to the flagship podcast. I am excited to be joined by Super DJ, the one and only Derek Johnson, who's now going into the College Football Hall of Fame. DJ, congratulations, my man. Hey, thanks, Chip. Uh, it's always an honor to be uh, introduced as a Hall of <laughs> I guess a Hall of Famer now. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, man, I, I just uh, I just thank God and I'm just humbled uh, uh, for, for that announcement. Yeah, I mean, okay, so it comes down on January 9th. What were you doing? How did they tell you? Mm -hmm. I see you've already got a cool football with, you know, the College Football Hall of Fame football with your name on it. Yeah. So how did this all go down? Well, um, I, I got I, it was in, I got in the mail on Saturday. Um, I'm not sure the date of that, um, but this past Saturday, I, I – I got a box. Usually, my my wife has uh, um, just a bunch of boxes come to the house all the time. I'm always getting on her like, you, you order something else, you know. <laughs> but it, this time, she's like, look, it's not even mine; it's yours. So I, she gave it to me. I opened it. Uh, it had a you know nice ball, nice uh, stuff. I mean, it's all nice. They had it presented really well, and uh, it had my name on there with. Uh, Congratulations on being being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. So uh, that was a moment I paused and said, "Man, this is you know, God is good." I'm all, I'm always uh, trying to uh, um, um, whenever I get news, big uh, awards like this, this this really just humbles me and uh, lets me know how blessed I am, and it just gives me a time to reflect on all the people that helped me to get there. Because it's never about yourself, you know. We're, we're, I always kind of picture myself as that. That, that turtle on that fence post, you know, like everybody sees that turtle, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, somebody helped him get to get up to that point. I helped him get on that fence post. And uh, I'm, I'm one of those, one of those people. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's well-deserved. I mean, my gosh, you won the, the Buckus award, the Nagurski award um, in 2004, both of those, you, you know, still hold uh, records at Texas for most, Force fumbles in a season, and I know the the one that's most important to you: career tackles for loss. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I always pride myself in getting the TFL. That's just uh, that kind of lets you know uh, what kind of player I am. Uh, not that tackles aren't you know I got a lot of tackles, but uh, when you can uh, um, hit the ball carrier behind the line of scrimmage, you're being an impact player, and that's what I prided myself off of. All right, we're going to get your advice for some of these incoming freshman linebackers uh, in just a second. But I want to make sure I got this story right, because I remember writing about it when you were a player. And I, I think your mom told me that the first time she took you to play football or something, you didn't even want to get out of the car. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, tell me about this, because then, of course, you know, everyone sees you as a wrecking machine, uh, a destroyer of men on the football field. So take me through this, that first time or whatever happened. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I do have an excuse. Uh, it's not a good excuse, but the coach was really, really mean. I mean, it was, <laughs> he was, he was, he was tough. Uh, but needless to say, uh, my mom knew him. So it wasn't like, you know, that, uh, uh, I was in any, any, any kind of harm or danger. So she knew him. So she knew I was in good hands, but it was, you know, it was in the middle of the city. So, you know, we were in a, uh, we were in a tough part of the city, but at the same time, uh, she knew I had a great ability. I can run, jump. I was a really athletic kid and, um, uh, it was in a fourth grade and, uh, I'm nine years old. And I just remember to yesterday, I, I went there one day and then the next day a mom, you know, come to go drop me off. And I start boohooing and crying. I'm like, no, I am not getting out of this car. And she, you know, she said some choice words to me <laughs> and, and, and made me get out. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, without her showing that tough love, it really, really paid off. And uh, um, actually, after I played for him for a few games and got used to him, you know, I was one of the best players on the team. So he was it, – it, he, he, I saw him fussing and stuff. He was mainly fussing at the other players, <laughs> not, not so me. But uh, uh, it was, it's one of those stories where you, you remember for the rest of your life. And I'm glad my mom showed me that tough love to say, hey, no, this is what you're gonna do. I know it's gonna help you. Just in, you know, sports in general, 
helps kids just psychologically, uh, physically, just being able to be in shape and mentally being able to say, hey, when you get knocked down, you can get right back up. Yeah. And I remember that that was kind of a little bit of a, a you know, foreshadowing because, you know, everything went great for you at Texas. It did. It did. You had you had good coaches. I'll, I'll get your thoughts on Greg Robinson, because I think he helped you a lot. You've told me in the past. But I remember the last time we talked, you know, when Todd Haley uh, was the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, it it was not great. And he was he was not, you know, he was like putting you on the bench and (laughs) and stuff. And but by God, you responded and went to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, and and I and I tell people this all the time. You don't know when your adversity is going to come. It's just going to happen at some point in life. But uh, when it does happen, not if it happens, when it does happen, how you respond means everything. And uh, being with the Chiefs, being a first round pick, uh, not winning a lot of games, but we had, a you know, another coaching change. I had, you know, Dick Vermeil first, then he retired. Then Herm Edwards came for three years. We didn't win much. Uh, and then Todd Henley came. Uh, he's supposed to be, the, you know, the next coach. Um, his first coach coaching gig, first head coaching job with the Chiefs. And I mean, he shook everything up. I mean, he just, I mean, he he changed it. I was on my last year, one or two years left on my deal. So this was like, man, this this is timing wise, it's like, man, you're gonna you gonna really uh question, you know, if I can be an impact player and you put me on the bench. And I had to stay on the bench for the whole year. I tell you what, I've learned the most that year. Not that. Uh, he should have did it, but the way I responded really helped out, really helped out. And I tell you what, I learned how to be more of a consistent player. And I tell you what, anything after that, that's crazy. After that season, after the 2009 season, every year I had some kind of Pro Bowl status. Like that. that's, that's, that's what happens when you can fight through something that doesn't favor you, when you have that adversity, and it makes you actually – better it actually makes you stronger when you fight through it and uh uh man that that was that was i'm glad it happened that way because uh, um uh, that adversity helped me to uh tip me over the um uh, the top to say hey i am a pro bowl player instead of that player that that's uh, has a lot of potential, you know, coming from Texas, big time player. And just, I wasn't, I, I wouldn't say I, I wasn't a bust at all, but it was just like, Oh, he's really good. And then you'll say, Hey, where is he? And then I just started being more consistent and, uh, uh, making my name, uh, uh, make some noise. And it was, it was pretty cool. Did he ever say, Hey, I, I like the way you responded. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Afterwards. I mean, he was, um, the, we were friends, really, really good friends. I mean, it's one of those things where he would come to me being a captain on the team and ask me certain questions. And so it's a different kind of de- 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 dynamic for me. I was kind of like caught off guard, like, man, he pushed me to the side uh, when he first got there. So I'm thinking, man, you know, uh, this is not um, now to see you. Uh, we have this chemistry and have this um, uh, this com- communication going. It, it was It was really different for me, but at the same time, I knew it wasn't personal. So that's the big thing about football. It's never personal. Uh, it, it, it's always business on the field. And uh, um, you, you got you to gotta show your worth each and every day. And I did that. And I came out on top. Well, your story of success is phenomenal. I mean, you're an icon at the University of Texas. And I, I go back to your freshman year. And I'm like, wow, you had 13 tackles for loss as a freshman and you're a freak athletic. I mean, six, four, what's your vertical, what's your vertical jump coming out of high school? Um, I don't know if it's coming out of high school, but coming out of, uh, coming out of college, it was 37 and a half, 37 and a half. Yep. At six, four and you're running. What did you run at the combine? Oh, four, five, oh, yep. Four, five, oh. I mean, yeah. so you're, you know, and here we, here we have Anthony Hill coming in. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the highest rated players in the country in the 2023 class inside linebacker. And if I'm Anthony Hill, what are you telling me? What 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 are you telling me? What what can I expect? What am I going to go through? And what advice would you give me? Oh, that would be easy. That's one of those things where um, the first hopefully I, I can have this 
even though I'm saying this right now, I'm actually going to have this combo with him because uh, I'm up at UT all the time. So uh, what I would tell Anthony, a guy like Anthony Hill with so much potential, right? A uh, guy that's kind of uh, looked up, looked upon like when I came here. So big time name, uh, has all this potential and this promise. Uh, if he could uh, um, uh, um, stay healthy, uh, meaning get in the weight room, get bigger, do all the nutrition that they ask you to do. Uh, uh, um, don't talk. Don't, you know, don't, 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 don't say nothing. Your freshman, your freshman year, don't say anything. Just free, work your tail off and learn the playbook. Really learn the playbook. Uh, and now I can't tell you that. I'm telling you this through experience. I can't say I, I was perfect at this. But just to tell him how ideally what to do is to learn the playbook because uh, he has all this promise and this potential for his body, uh, for his uh, physical ability to make a lot of plays and, and, and to help us on defense. I mean, he's probably going to have to play this year anyway. But um, uh, if he can learn the playbook and get that out of his head, because a lot of times young players uh, don't develop quick or they don't play as quick as you want them because – they honestly don't know the playbook. They don't know what's going on. So they're, they're wide-eyed, deer in headlights, they're looking at this, looking at this, don't know what the key, and they don't know their job like they should so they can concentrate and anticipate certain plays uh, with what the offense is doing. So if he can learn the playbook, I mean, uh, and, and kind of simplify it for him, even if it's hard for him, he needs to really uh, – a double down and really get with some, you know, coach or whatever to really learn this playbook. I'm telling you, he can, he can, he can have an impact earlier than later. What, what did it take for you, DJ, to figure that out? Was there a person, a game, a practice where you realized, oh man, I'm not doing as much as I could be doing here as a freshman? Yeah, um, um, it was, it was more so when I got. Uh, Cause I only started two. I had probably wanted to uh, probably almost, I think Amar Brooks may have more tackles than me at the end when we played um, 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 Colorado in the big 12 championship. But before that I was a leading tackler on the team and I only started two games. So wow. that tells you that uh, whenever I came into the game, I was really flying around and making plays. But when I became, uh, it was mainly when I became more of a sophomore because I, well, because when I was a freshman, when I put me in the game, they put me in situations where responsibility was like, all right, you, you, you know, you sit in the middle, you're the whole player, you go right to left, you just follow the ball, you know, just kind of minimize it for me. So I really uh, appreciate them doing that early in my career. But when I got as, when I became as a sophomore, right after my freshman season, Man, we I, I had to learn the playbook a lot. So it was, and and I actually my I bet my 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 stats were probably not as um, um, not as big when it comes to um, um, uh, tackles and certain big plays when I was a sophomore, just because I was still trying to learn the playbook and really trying to be a student of the game. So it took me a while during my sophomore year. I, I played well, don't get me wrong, but um, to, to, the, um, to the expectation that I wanted to, I really wanted to play a little bit better. And my sophomore year, that really let me know, like, okay, you got to really learn this playbook because you can run fast and jump and run with receivers. But if you don't know this playbook, you're going to be kind of stuck and, and, and almost make the play because you're going to be a, a little bit off. So the mental aspect of the game is, I mean, humongous. I can't, so, so essential. So Greg Robinson comes in yep. and he gets you to slow down a little bit, right? To, mm -hmm. to, to read just for a split second before you get that motor going, right? Means, a, means the world. I mean, it was uh, uh, honestly when Greg Robinson came in, coming from an NFL background, it really took my game to the next level. Uh, I had an opportunity to work on other moves when it comes to n punching the ball out. I mean, doing doing all those other things because I knew my job like the back of my hand. So now I have opp now I have time to say, hey, what formation is this? Oh, I think they're going to do this. I, you know, to really anticipate stuff and to work on extra stuff, meaning knocking the ball out, looking for those opportunities where I can do more for my defense. And uh, uh, he, he was a blessing. You know, God rest his soul, but he was a blessing to come to me before I got to the NFL. And he, and he told me, 
um, before I left, uh, he never got on me uh, while I um, while I was playing my senior year. But he was like, "Hey, the way you take on tackles, I mean, the way you take on blockers at time is very unconditional, uh, unconventional." But uh, they're going to have, you know, the league's going to ask you about that. So be ready to, for some questions or whatnot, because, you know, even though you made a lot of plays here at Texas, uh, it, it's, it's very unconventional the way you slip blocks and do certain things. So uh, um, uh, make sure you're, you're, you're confident in your answer when you, when you talk to them about it. So when, because I, I was looking at your numbers, you had nine forced fumbles your last year at Texas yeah. and 11 career forced fumbles. So, I mean, he really made an impact or, or the game slowed down so much for you because you would just stalk guys. You'd come up behind them. You'd angle your punch. If if they were going to the sideline, you'd angle the punch so the ball would go back into the field. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, secure the, secure the tackle right before they get out of bounds and come around and punch that ball out. I mean, it, it was – I mean, I, I, I worked on it in practice. You know, if you want to do anything, you got to make a habit of it if you want to have success in anything. And I made a habit of trying to strip that ball out and punch it out and uh, being able to have that physical ability to, 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 to track down the runner and then secure the tackle – then knock it out. Now that I look back on it, I'm like, man, that was pretty, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing that year. And you're like, why can't other people do this? But <laughs> they're not six four. They can't run four or five. They don't have your arm length, you know. But that was that was an amazing year. And 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 of course, you all go to the Rose Bowl, you beat Michigan, and away you go. Um on your way to becoming the all-time leading tackler for the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, we'll take a quick break with uh, Super DJ Derek Johnson. He's going to the College Football Hall of Fame, but he's going he's gonna to stay with us uh, through this break here on the flagship podcast. Uh, and for those of you watching on the Horns 24-7 YouTube channel, we'll roll on. And um, DJ, you know, when you look at uh, your college career, do you – do you have a moment or or a season or a game that, like, if I say your top highlight or your top game, your favorite memory, what what comes to mind? Oh man, um, definitely my senior year. My my, my senior year, um, um, even though we couldn't beat OU, you know, you know, I, we just couldn't get over that hump. I mean, it's what twelve zero, so it, it was still a close game and offensively. BY was, you know, BY was BY, but not quite, you know, you know, the next year's BY. But um, look at me blaming it on the offense already. But uh <laughs> but I'll tell you what, um, um it probably the probably the o o Oklahoma game, one of the Oklahoma game, just because um, for me to uh, be in that that game is such an NFL environment. It's so hostile. If you can control your emotions during that um during that chaos during that that, that time of year uh, that game that saturday i tell you what uh you can handle anything and for me to go through that each year um had some had, had some few tough losses but very close games most of the time in my last year we, we got we lost 12 zero but i'm telling you what uh when it comes to uh, knocking the ball out i had an interception that that game it was uh, i mean it was you know i played my tail off you know at the same time i think it was uh, letting the country know and letting oh you know hey we're almost there we're almost there of course we you know we go to michigan and win that game and vince it's a freaking killer in that game is that game might be just as better as then it's you know then it's rose bowl game with the national championship but um, um, for us to go out like we did, I'm sure we finished, you know, two, three, or four in the nation, and then, and uh, uh, we, we, you know, it was it was a building block for the national championship. I, I would say. Now, you did not play at Texas with Jamal Charles. I did not play with Jamal Charles. I I I, I played a lot with him in Kansas City all of his career, but uh, no, I did not. As soon as I left. He came in and, 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 you know, his freshman year, it's all about time and he won a national championship. So that was, it's pretty cool. But I mean, you all, it was like the Kansas city Longhorns there. Absolutely. Absolutely. On, on offense and defense. I mean, what was it like 
and you know your time there together in Kansas City. Could you even go out? Um, and I mean, y'all were you know such big figures on that uh, on that team. Yeah, we. <laughs> Well, Kansas, the good thing about Kansas is pros and cons to this, but it's a small market. So uh, we, we could go out. Of course, uh, you know, it's a football town. So Kansas, if you're a Chiefs fan, you bleed red in Kansas City. Uh, if you, even if you live on the Kansas side or the Missouri side, uh, that, that they bring those two states together for a good cause. And they love their Chiefs. Uh, they love me and Jamal being being Longhorn. So you know that you got Missouri fans down there and Kansas fans down there. So they they really adapted us Longhorns, and they they love us. I I, I can tell you that. And for me to be the uh, all time leading tackler in Chiefs history, and Jamal to be the all time leading rusher in Chiefs history, it's, it's pretty pretty uh, uh, remarkable to say the least. Yeah, I mean, and you all had some you know, crazy games together. Like, you know, I think one of your best games was one of his best games. Absolutely. It was against the Denver Broncos. Yep. And, you know, I had two interceptions for touchdowns and he went off of 250 yards. I mean, he was, he was going off. It was, it was a coming out party for us. How many touchdowns did you score? Uh, I think four, four or five, which is four or five in the NFL. In the NFL. Yep. Uh, I think I scored one in, uh, one in college, one in college. Actually, in college, uh, it's a, it should be an asterisk by a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I got nine interceptions in college, which is, which is a lot for a linebacker. I really got 10. I really have 10, actually, just because uh, I had four my second year. I had four my, my uh, third year, and then I had one my last year. But my freshman year, I had an interception. Everybody knows this in the Washington game. In the, uh, in the bowl uh, game. In the bowl game. So, uh, yeah, that was a big play at the, towards the end of the game. But at that time, uh, in 2001, it was the last year that bowl game stats didn't count. So, it was one of So, yeah, so I, I, got, I got robbed on that one. So, really, when people say, oh, you have nine, ta- nine interceptions, your, your, uh, your, uh, your college career, that's pretty good. I'm like, yeah, I, got, I actually got 10. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's, uh, that's, that's hilarious. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, let's, I'm, I'm going to put a little asterisk in my book. Yeah, absolutely. Ten. 10 for DJ. All right. So, um, tell everybody what you're doing, um, with the defend the dream foundation. Cause I think this is so great. Um, and the inspiration for mm-hmm. the defend the dream foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the Defend the Dream Foundation, uh, which is my foundation, uh, which caters to inner city kids through education. And uh, what we do, we do library makeovers. Uh, so in Title I elementary schools that need help, not not the schools that, that, that kind of have it, you know, have it together, but the ones where you walk in their library and you say, wow, uh, we, need, we need to change this uh, environment. And uh, w- w- what we do, it, it's a mini capital project, what it is. And this this is... This is a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar project. We I have seventeen of these so far, and I tell you what, what we do is we go in there. I mean, you talk about painting the walls, uh, fat heads everywhere. I mean, we liven the place up, bookshelves, uh, uh, little couches, functional, uh, uh, just little things that they can use while they're in the library, changing their atmosphere, uh, changing uh, changing their environment. And the biggest cost that's not as much of a cost. But the cost is the age appropriate books that we provide for the kids, which is unbelievable uh, um, for us to uh, create uh, um, uh, uh, reading opportunities for them, uh, independent reading opportunities for them and for them to because the library is the heart of the school. So if we can if we can change that and reading, reading it is the segue to everything. If you're an inner city kid and uh, you, you live in a, a low income area, you, your way out is education. You know, my mom is school teacher for over 40 years. So uh, that's that's my background. I, I grew up in a house with a school teacher. So I know how important education is, especially for inner city kids. And uh, and I want to um, uh, be mentors for them. I want to be that, that that face that says, hey, um, even though I have this platform, I want to use my platform uh, knowing that they say, man, this is a celebrity. This is cool. They're looking at me. And then at the same time, I'm letting them know 
how important education is, how important reading is, because we need to get the, the, the science behind this. We need to get inner city kids reading level up because after they leave, this is a stat, it's a bad stat. Um, if you're an inner city kid and you're not on grade level reading after you leave the uh, elementary schools, half of those kids don't finish high school. So that's a that's a big deal. So for us to pour into them and put more books uh, into the library, because when, when I get administrative people and um, um, principals and teachers saying, man, you know, little Johnny, he never wanted to go to the library. Now he's like, man, I want to, I, I want to go, you know, he wants to go in there want to, wants to read because the environment's nice. So if you can change their environment and give them the proper resources to reach their full potential, uh, uh, sky's the limit. That's awesome. That yeah. is incredible. Um, defend the dream foundation yeah, yeah. And, and and if you if you have a passion for uh, um, want to give back to and i'm doing most of all this in austin now i had it in kansas city since 2013 14 but now since i um the last couple of years i've been getting so many uh so so much supporters when it comes to kendra scott and covert cadillac i mean everybody's jumping on board and helping out for this cause but if you want to donate you can donate at derrickjohnsonfoundation.org derrickjohnsonfoundation.org we're doing some amazing things here in austin that's that's great and uh now i don't know if i should be touting this or not but doesn't your wife have a business uh yeah uh the security boards uh the yeah boards. yeah definitely definitely well uh she's partnering uh, with our friend and she's, she's, she's doing some, some, they're doing some great things, but, uh, it's going back and forth. She, she's, she's, she used to be into it, uh, more, but, uh, it's, it's, it is a good business. I, I love security board. <laughs> oh man. I'm, I'm right there with you. I will, uh, and, I will devour, uh, I will devour uh, those things. Yeah. And that's called luxury board. So yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I thought of one more thing about our man, Greg Robinson, cause, uh, he used to make fun of you for wearing that neck that neck protector. He did. You remember that, huh? He called it a toilet seat. <laughs> so what, how did he, did he bust your chops about that or? Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, um, um, he just, he just asked me like, you know, why you, why do you wear it? Like, you know, it's it because you don't hit the right way or you don't, you don't brace yourself to, you know, you need that. And, you know, at the time I, I was, I was into, uh, trying to be all in. So uh, if, if honestly, if, if 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 we didn't have Greg Robinson there, I probably would have had it my last year. But for some reason, I started to think, you know what? Let me take this off. I actually look probably more like an athlete, which I am, if I take that off. Because you got that Brian Cox looking uh, cowboy uh, pad in the back. Uh, it makes you look stiff. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it's a. Uh, I took it off and uh, uh, still had a great year. So I was like, you know what? Let me just take it off and uh, uh, I can do without it. He he was a character, man. He yes. was a character. Do you have any other, you know, memories or stories of your time with him? Oh yeah, I just I just remember that uh, that that he wanted me to just take more uh, um, accountability for the guys around me, like uh, be that leader. And that's when I kind of stepped into my own. I always pretty good player at Texas, but my last year I really uh, adapted some uh, characteristics of just the, just the leadership part that he was like, just pushing me forward. Like, hey, you ha he, he, he admired the way I played the game. And he was just like, man, that leadership part, you have it. You need to speak more, you need to talk more because uh, you, you know you have certain guys on a team that really, they talk all the time, they just talk. But I was a guy that you say, hey, when DJ's talking, hey, we, we we should be listening. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so um, the College Football Hall of Fame. Have you been there? I have not. I have not heard a lot about it. Been, you know, I, I've been wanting to get there, so uh, I have my chance now. Oh yeah. I mean, they moved they moved it out of wherever it was, South Bend or something. I don't know. But now it's in Atlanta, and right, it's in Atlanta. it is. It is awesome. It really is. And I'm going to look forward to finding your, your helmet. Uh, I know where Doug English's is. I know where VY's is. Um, and the list goes on and on. But uh, 
This is awesome, awesome stuff, DJ. And as as I said, totally deserved. And it was really cool because when you Google uh, Derek Johnson, College Football Hall of Fame, you know, the, the Raiders did a story about it. I think you only played like six games for them. But, you know, the Chiefs, you know, all the people who've ever, Texas, of course, but all the all the people you've ever come across are you know clearly excited and and want to you know stake their claim to their time with you because um you know you obviously produced on the field but you've been such a great uh member of the com- community and ambassador for these teams and it's just awesome to see man i i really really uh i'm happy for you I don't I don't take that lightly. I appreciate that chip. You know, I always, yeah. always now, how's how's the golf game? You know what? <laughs> it's getting better. I just I mean, I mean, it's just it's 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 always frustrating because it's like, all right, I'm getting better. I broke 90, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm away. And then it's like, nope, you don't you don't have it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you it's know, a humbling game, isn't it? I know, but it's it's one of those games that makes you know uh, brings that competitive edge out of me. And uh, I, I just need more lessons, and I think I just you know need to need to uh, be more consistent um, at hitting the ball. But it's fun; it is really fun. I enjoy. It. Uh, I wish I would have played. Started playing a long time ago. I miss. I, I, I don't know why I wasn't, uh, but as soon as I got uh, out of uh, the NFL, I was like, you know what? Let me take up this golf. Let me see what it is. And I've been missing out. Now, are you playing with Griff? Are you playing with Michael Griffin? I, I do play with Griff sometimes. I'm better than Griff. You know, Griff's a big ball hitter. Like he'll 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 knock it off the deal. But I'm I play more than him because he, you know, obviously on uh, Longhorn Network, he's got other stuff to do. So I can, you know, I got my foundation and got my kiddos that keep me busy. But I, I play a little golf here and there. Is Jamal playing? Jamal, he does not play. I played with him the other day, and no, you know, <laughs> not having it. He is not having it. Uh, I'm sure if he wanted to, he could because he can do anything. But uh, Brian Arakpo is playing. He's doing okay. So we all, uh, you know, Quan Cosby, we, we all get out and uh, try to play a little bit. I love it. I love it. Well, DJ, again, congratulations, my friend. Um, okay, and one last thought because Texas fans are going to want to get your thoughts on on these uh, these linebackers coming in in this 2023 class. And Jalen Ford, what did you think of uh, Jalen Ford's season? Uh, this past year? Man, I really enjoy watching Jalen Ford. Um, uh, you talk about a player that uh, kind of jumped out where no nobody was thinking about Jalen. You know, you knew he was on the team, but you was like, wow, he's he's actually a, he's, he's one of our star players. And uh, uh, we already knew about Overshun and what he bring to the t- what he brought to the table. But for it was a brush of fresh air, honestly, uh, to see uh, Jalen run around the way he does. 41s all over the field, tackles, interceptions, tied my, my interception uh, um, um, record. Uh, but I tell you what, man, um, it's, it's pretty cool watching him. He's a big time player. I'm glad he came back. I heard he had a you know opportunity to leave if he wanted to, but he made the right decision to come back to get better and to be a higher pick in the NFL and uh, just to just to just to be the best person he can be. So uh, he's he's pretty cool. I, I, I've I've talked to him a few times, so he's a very humble kid too. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, DJ, hopefully I'll see you around campus, but uh, congratulations again and happy new year. Hey, you too. Thanks. All right. For Derek Johnson, I am Chip Brown. Thanks so much, everybody, for for listening and watching the uh, the flagship podcast interview with Derek Johnson. Until next time, stay safe and keep the faith.